I've been playing a lot of LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga recently, and I have to say, there is one major criticism of the game that I absolutely have to agree with, despite the fun I do have with it. Yes. The Galaxy Free Roam side missions really are just 90% collect stuff from other planets, or talk to a bunch of people and come back to the mission giver, or smuggle something from point A to point B and get stopped a bunch of times to fight bad guys, go to a spot and kill a thing, or go find a guy for an astromech. And also, yes, most of the puzzles are just moving boxes, shooting targets to open a thing, or pressing buttons, either on a timer or to get the right lights to turn on. But also, the missions kind of suck. Not all of them, but they're all bit short, really. Most of them are too short. And there's definitely some content missing that I think could have been in there. I am fully aware of the crunch time that went on this game. Let's imagine this in a hypothetical world where they actually respected their developers and gave them all the time they needed. What would I do to fix these games? Games? Levels. I want to try to fix the missions, levels, whatever in this game to fall more in line with LEGO's mindset, where they will take a scene and expand on it in a fun and interesting way. Or at the very least, to just include stuff in the movies that were taken out. Let's start, because there's 45 missions here. Also, I can't record my own footage, because I don't have a way to record PS4 footage, so I'll credit whose footage I'm using in the corner. A bigger fish. The first level of the prequel trilogy is just shooting a fish which doesn't do anything because a bigger fish eats it, then you shoot another fish and it, it also gets eaten. Riveting. Maybe the lamest individual level of all LEGO history. Not necessarily the lamest concept, that might be Force Awakenings opening the door mission, and maybe not the worst level in execution, because there is another one in this game that's even worse, but it isn't infuriating. It's just lame. I think the obvious thing to do for this level is just expand on it, because the concept is fine. You can have the starting bit remain, but when it gets dark, Either you have a sort of unsettling portion in the dark where you're trying to navigate your way through a simple enough to not be annoying maze, or the vehicle can get stuck and you can have the Jedi with their respirators and Jar Jar just as Jar Jar going out into the water to explore a portion on the open floor to free the vehicle and get on with the level. Maybe fight off some angry fish that try to kill you. Maybe even just both of those ideas. Or maybe even you can just get rid of everything you have already and just have a level where you explore the ocean floor as an exploration vehicle level with a boss at the start that gets eaten and then a proper boss at the end. Really, anything would improve to this level to make it not suck. The Bunta Eve Classic. I don't actually know how to improve this level beyond getting rid of the lame-ass quick time moments. It's a fine level. Better call Mall. Another level I'm not exactly sure how to improve, it plays out as a fairly standard boss battle with an actual area to explore and do stuff in. Maybe just taking cues from the complete saga for some more interesting exploration. At the very least, make it so that if you kill the battle zone orchestra, it turns off the music. Outmanned, but not outgunganned. Let me paint you a picture, son. Portrait of a massive battle going on outside. And this level is about Jar Jar Binks and Captain Tarpoles fixing some catapults and then a 30 second bombing section. Yeah, so actually have the battle playable. You can have them fixing catapults, but make more of the level the actual Gungan Droid Army battle. You don't have to stick to the movie, you can just make it an all-out battle between them that you get to play through. You get to play as Jar Jar and Tarples, you get to man certain Gungan mounts and vehicles to fight, you can maybe climb into AATs and fight inside them. Maybe you build some wacky gadgets and items to destroy large groups of battle droids. It's Lego, be creative! Maybe then the actual level can be used as the ending, where the enemies get the advantage of you, and now that they do, you set up the, the big ass shield and you have to fight the little droids that do come in, fix up the catapults, fight back with them, and then you finish the level. Also, side note, I'm just letting the game play in the background of writing this, and the jazzy music from the Cantina Music Extra is giving me some strange Danganronpa 2 Jabberwock Island vibes, and I don't know why. Now this is pod racing. The final Phantom Menace level, again, I think is structurally fine, but maybe there should be a bit more to actually do? Like, I think you could just have the Lucre Hulk be a more interesting battle. I don't know, it, it just, I don't know why this battle of all the space battles didn't interest me much. I don't know. Maybe you can have a secret section in free play mode, where when you go into the Lucre Hulk, if you use a certain type of vehicle, you can enter an area that allows you to run around on foot to collect some mini kits, or those are the only collectibles and levels really, beyond challenges. But that's what I think you should do, just have an extra section for free play mode. Also, if I was to add a level into the Phantom Menace, maybe a portion of the Feed Palace escape that is in the actual main palace building, which is barely a thing in Galaxy Freeplay. 
or a level that takes place in the Luke Hulk at the start of the game where you have to escape, much like the first level of the Complete Saga. Honestly, Phantom Menace levels are just kind of eh. You got two levels I enjoy. They're two levels that are lame and one that just exists. Attack of the Clones, Biffweed's favorite Star Wars movie. A Wrestle with Wessel. I don't know how you could improve this level as much as I know you could just make it not so boring. You just fly in a straight line and that's really it. This part of the film has not been found in any Lego game of the two adaptations of it that I know of. Maybe you can make it so it's a split level between Obi-Wan flying the ship and Anakin skydiving onto Wessel. And by split level, I mean like the droid factory level where you can have one group in one area and you hold the button that depends on the version of the game you're playing for me on the PS4. It's triangle to switch into another group in a different portion of the level. Do that. So you have portions where you're shooting at her as Obi-Wan in the ship or in the ship in the fucking little cab thing. And then you can switch to the other section where you either find her through traffic and drop Anakin onto her from Obi-Wan, or actually have Anakin already off the vehicle, jumping on other vehicles in traffic to get to the right point to skydive onto Wessel, or both. Maybe make a star with Anakin with Obi-Wan, and then you jump off, and then you fight Vessel a little bit, then she knocks you out of the vehicle, you land in traffic, and you've got to climb your way back over towards her with Anakin. Maybe at the end you can have a short battle on the ground, or have the level start on the ground fighting off the worm thingies in Padme's room. Really, anything, I think. How many times am I going to say just do anything and it'll make it better? The Hunt for Django. So for a start, make the Django boss battle actually part of the level, that would be awesome. I did actually enjoy that boss battle and not being able to replay it kind of sucks, because the only other version you get to replay is the Mace Windu one, and I don't know, that just did, wasn't as fun for me. Secondly, this level is just really finding Django a bunch of bunks of rocks and then shooting him a few times and then finding him again, rinse and repeat. I guess that's fine, but maybe just giving us an on-rail shooter where you dodge his seismic charges and lasers and shoot him back like a Star Fox level would be fine, and then have it start with the searching for him, and then you go to that idea. And maybe for two-player purposes, you could have the second player playing as Django in the Slave 1. So when you're in two-player mode, it's like a 1v1 space battle. I don't know, maybe it works like that in the actual game, but I don't have anyone to do two-player with, so I wouldn't know. Droid Factory Frenzy. This level is actually fine in terms of how it goes. I wouldn't change much beyond saying, make some puzzles that aren't just press a panel or lightsaber a wall. Do more like the electrical charging at the start level. Hell, maybe make that the gimmick where you have to time electrical charges or get through difficult to navigate sections moving batteries around. Maybe you have to time when you give and take away charges so the compact the smashy things are in certain positions for you to jump on them to get to different areas. That would be really fun. A great plus would also be to make the level not perform like crap on most systems. Petronarchy Panic. Let me say what most people are going to be thinking, add a lot more droids, make this a real royale. Additionally, either you can do what the complete saga did and have you progressively save party members, or you could go completely crazy with the final battle like the Clone Wars game did and make that the big draw, just destroying huge numbers of battle droids, super battle droids and droidica until Django comes in. Have a ton of Jedi fighting alongside you instead of the honestly kind of disappointing battle we got. At least the monsters can be fought though, and the monsters aren't actually there in the big battle too, which is cool. Another interesting way you could do this level is to have a short section after the monster fight where you play as Mace Windu and Coleman Trabor, who criminally is not in the game, and go through the building that they're in towards where Count Dooku is, fighting off Geonosians and doing some puzzle platforming, which the game severely lacks any of in the missions. You could also have the clone battle from the movie, but I like ending this level at Django Fett, and leaving the big army battle to the Battle of the Jedi. Straight up, start this with the Lat Gunship, which criminally is also not playable in the game. And have it do the big army battle, shooting spider droids, destroying large just groups of droids, maybe make it a dual section bit, like you can switch between perspective to play as either the Lat Gunship or a ground unit, maybe Padme and a random Jedi with her like Kid Fisto or Luminara on Dooley, that's fighting droids on the surface of Geonosis, and have to build things that help the Lat Gunship progress through the canyons. Additionally, the Lat Gunship shoots things down that help Padme and the Jedi continue too, making so they have to work together to help each other move forward, leaning up to the big battle with the giant droid testicles where one side helps aim the big artillery cannons, and the other side either protects it from attacks, or uses the opening created by the cannons to destroy the big balls, or maybe both of those things. Then, after that, you end with the Anakin and Obi-Wan facing Dooku, which can just be the whole level itself. These levels are really short, they are just like sections. I actually do like this level a good bit, I just think having the big battle beforehand would be great. I don't know what you could add beyond maybe making the big battle its own level, but I'm fine just doing it like this. 
Revenge of the Sith time, the goated movie, and one of my favorite Star Wars films of all time. Out for the count. Do I even need to say the Battle of Coruscant should be playable? Either making a massive space battle using the game's existing space combat controls, or making it a Star Fox rail shooter like the Complete Saga's version. Either way it would work, either way it would be really fucking fun if you have to work your way onto Grievous's capital ship. After that you get the level we got, exploring the ship, getting through rooms, and leading to the battle with Count Dooku. Then after that you can maybe have it end with a portion where you escape the ship with Palpatine much like the Complete Saga. Just add to the level, because what exists isn't exciting, at least the Dooku battle is, but the stuff before that isn't terribly amazing. But you can keep it as a portion level and add stuff before and after. So uncivilized. Instead of following a level that is really just a little bit of exploration and a lightsaber boss with a level that's just a lightsaber boss, and then having two other levels in this film that are also just lightsaber bosses with nothing special, have this Grievous boss itself just be the final portion of the level. The level we got is just the ending. Before that, you get a section where you're chasing Grievous down on his wheel bike while you play as Obi-Wan riding Boga, chasing him down, blocking his laser blast, fighting him side by side on your mounts. Then maybe Obi-Wan either gets knocked off Boga and has to jump onto Grievous' bike or jumps off her onto it and has a battle on the bike with Grievous. Then at the end, instead of just having the gun bit be a cutscene, have a unique section where Obi-Wan is reduced to only the blaster and the force and his bit hands to face Grievous without his lightsabers to climax the boss battle. Aside from that, I think the boss itself is mostly fine, and it can remain as it is. At least, you would get rid of the issue you have with the level that exists, which is, it looks really big, but it feels really small. That's not going to be the biggest problem if it's just the ending to an existing level. Droid Attack on the Wookiees The first change I'd make to this level, which generally I think is fine, is to have the different building options lead to totally different paths you can play. With the Chewbacca defense in Episode 6, you have an option to build two different areas that allow you to go to completely different paths in the level. Do that with this as well, as opposed to just changing a small section that's pretty insignificant. I also think starting it like the complete saga would be cool, with the clones being nice to you as you head to a meeting, only for it to suddenly change after a cutscene. Another thing, make the level a good deal longer, including a segment where you actually are on the beach, full of Wookiees on your side, fighting droids and clones who are working together against you. A full-scale battle, where you're just a small part trying to escape and get off Kashyyyk. Actually exploring the area and having an expansive level instead of a few platforms to jump on, then a massive zipline to another short area. Have that zipline replaced with a fully fleshed out level, making the most of Yoda's force powers in generic heroes, gun, grapple... I forget the hero you're given, it's one of the Wookiees. This is where I now have to sort of break sequence and say Droid Attack on the Wookiees should actually be level 4. Level 3 should be the Senate battle with Mace Windu, Kid Fisto, Sezi Tin, and the other one. But, with a twist. You start the level playing as just Mace Windu and Kid Fisto and the other two, heading through the Jedi Temple, going towards the Senate building. You do some simple puzzles, some simple platforming, a bit of creativity and Lego charm to get to the Senate room. Then, it goes into a cutscene, but it's in real time. You see the camera pan around the room. It makes you think this is just the cutscene. They have their dialogue, but then the camera stops behind Palpatine, and you get a button prompt that says, press whatever button for your version of the game to declare this treason. You press the button, Palpatine says, it's treason then, and now you're playing as Senator Palpatine. He jumps into the fray, and you have to battle the four Jedi on your own. It goes completely against what you expect. He's not the boss of this level. He's the guy you play as in the final build of the level. It's a crazy difficult battle where you have to take them out one at a time, going after four Jedi who go after you. Then, because of the two-player aspect, you have to consider what the other player is going to be doing. The battle ends with Palpatine locking blades with Windu, and then it transitions to Anakin, who's desperately running through all the puzzles from before trying to get to the Senate battle. However, instead of solving them like Windu and Fisto did, instead you give into the dark side and power through them. You break the puzzles to get through them. Maybe you could also say that the Jedi got through certain areas because they're Jedi Masters, while Anakin doesn't have the rank so he can't do that. So he has to make alternate puzzles to get there by breaking shit. In two player mode however, one player does the boss battle while the other player has to navigate through this area, cutting down walls and destroying the place to make it to Palpatine. The end of the level sees them come together, turning the tables on Windu to make it a two on one battle that ends relatively quickly due to the combined Sith power and ends with Windu getting blown down the window. Then you have droid attack on the Wookiees. Then we get the final mission, the high ground. The complete saga's Darth Vader is one of my favorite levels in any video game, and instead of just trying to replicate that brilliance, my idea is to just make it a two 
two stage level, or I guess a switch level. Instead of Darth Vader from the Complete Saga, or what we actually got, which is one guy plays as Obi-Wan, and then sometimes you switch to fucking R2-D2 and C-3PO to solve some lame puzzles. Instead, you flick between, or with two players simultaneously play, the Yoda and Palpatine fight, and the Anakin and Obi-Wan fight at the same time, in a single level. The battles can remain mostly the same as the actual game, but they're two sides of a single level. This changes Revenge of the Sith from four lightsaber boss fights with basically no difference and one standard level, to a space shooter that becomes a regular level ending with a lightsaber boss, to an exciting vehicle chase that ends with a lightsaber boss, to a subversive unexpected level that starts as a puzzle platformer and then becomes a crazy boss battle where you're the villain, then a long expansive level where you're in the middle of a big skirmish, and then ending with a dual lightsaber boss battle level where you face two bosses as different characters in different areas. Whew, that was a lot. Let's talk about the original trilogy now. A New Hope, Boarding Party, can remain most of the same, just make it a bit more fleshed out with more interesting puzzles and you're golden, it's a good level. Hunk of Junk is an interesting concept with you having to defend Chewie as he fixes the Falcon and occasionally help, but given this is a Lego game and Lego is all about building stuff, wouldn't it be way more interesting if you were Chewie fixing the Falcon? Maybe there's both the need to defend the Falcon from Stormtroopers, but also solving puzzles with the five distinct classes of character you're giving for the level to get pieces to build the Falcon up. Maybe you have those optional builds where you can build one of any number of things, you get three options. You can build different parts of the Falcon in any order you want from any pile of parts. So you can choose what you want to build in what order to decide your optimal path in terms of fixing the Falcon. Maybe you get the option of building shield parts that can protect the Falcon better. You just say it has a health bar that goes down over time when it gets shot at, but it's still very long so it doesn't feel too unfair. Or instead you could build weaponry that can shoot back at stormtroopers, or maybe you can build certain areas that don't actually benefit the Falcon, but instead can act as bridges to help get to other areas in out of order or in easier ways to get more pieces to build up the Falcon quicker. Really play into the building aspect and the freedom and creativity to do LEGO in your own way into the level's progression, with different puzzles involving the protocol droid splitting, the force, the scoundrel aim, the hero grapples, and the astromech... panels? Finish that with a section where you're actually in the cockpit, and at the end of the level you have to protect the ship from within. You now take control of the Falcon's blasters to shoot down stormtroopers to get yourself protected in the short takeoff sequence. But if you play the level well, then your Falcon probably is well defended enough that it can just take the punishment for the duration of that final bit. If you want, you could also maybe have a section at the start of the level that takes place within the cantina, and maybe even the speeder drive over where you have to avoid Tusken Raiders, but I'm sure if this concept was expanded fully, it'd be long and satisfying enough to be its own entire level. Maybe as a joke, have the Imperial Spy present in the section and killable in four blasts to reference his boss battle in the Complete Saga. Best layered plans, and this is some rescue, honestly should just be made into a single level. It's all just the layer rescue and the escape, and I think it's it'd make a pretty decent, big, expansive level with a lot of stuff to explore if you just combine them. As well as being well-crafted enough to not feel boring despite how big it is. So, we have room for another level. Where do we pull from? Well, let's look at some options you'd have, and I'll let you guys decide what you want. You could have a level at the start that takes place in the final moments of Rogue One, just to add a bit of extra Star Wars film content to the game and from a fan-favorite film, which also allows you to actually use the Rogue One characters to get the plans to the Tantive Four. Or, you could have a level about Luke exploring a Jawa sandcrawler while they're buying 3PO and R2, and give us an expansive level focusing on puzzle platforming with occasional moments of battle against rogue droids and aggressive Jawas. You could also have a level taking place after those two that I just combined that focuses on the Falcon fighting off against the TIE fighters chasing it from the Death Star, with a dual screen setup where one person is in third person doing the Falcon flying, and the other person is in first person doing the turret sections. Or you can have that level concept, but instead of escaping the Death Star, it's when they're escaping Tatooine after the hunk of junk level. Any of those ideas could work, but either way, the final level remains stay on target. All I'll say, make the trench run a proper trench run. The actual trench run at the end of the level is just a little alcove that you shoot a torpedo into fight like three seconds into the flight. It's pretty pathetic. Empire Strikes Back. Hoth and Cold is kind of a boring level, honestly, but I know I've seen some people have fun. Make the platforming a bit more interesting to me, and in my eyes, it's a good level. But also, add the Wampa battle as the mission's boss. You don't get Luke for this, at least not initially. Instead, if you look in the background of the boss battle, you can see Luke comically trying to pull the lightsaber towards him with the force in the background, but completely failing to. Make it funny. A nice little detail, that is something LEGO would do. The boss itself, though, is just using the two blaster characters instead. 
using the hero grapple and the scoundrel aiming to beat the Wumpa's first two health bars down by using the environment and of course shooting it. Inadvertently, you save Luke, and in the final phase of the boss battle, you get to play as Luke and sever the Wumpa's arm. We don't have many bosses that aren't just lightsaber battles or primarily focus on non-lightsaber users, so it'd be a nice change of pace. Assault on Echo Base. This one generally doesn't need too many changes, just make it a bit longer and feel more like a hectic attempt to fight back against the ADAT threat, and maybe make it so the AT-ATs don't just stop in place if you don't take them out in time, because if you don't take them out in time and level, they will just stop before getting anywhere. You could also have a section in space after the at, -AT fight, but I'm okay with that, the ADATs are good enough. Never Tell Me The Odds is a strange level. The start can remain the same with the Star Destroyer fight, the asteroid field chase could be a bit faster and longer, making you feel more like a high speed chase through a large field covered in rocks, and then it should end with a section that takes place within the Exogorth, where you fight off some Minox, fix up the Falcon, and take in a moment of levity within it, before a desperate attempt to escape from inside where you have to get out through the closing jaws of the Exogorth. Simple. Hibernation Station also remains the same in terms of beats and what happens, but with some major changes to the level design. First off, make Cloud City a bit bigger with more stuff to explore. Secondly, make saving land as allies mandatory, because otherwise you can just walk from point A to point B to end level without actually doing anything. Thirdly, do what I said with the Falcon building for this Chewy Rebuilds of Falcon segment too. But of course, as you're contained to a smaller area, it, it's a lot shorter and more simple, because you can't cram a full level into this area. Maybe have more of a focus on defending the Falcon from Slave 1, instead of the actual game where you can just stand there if you want and the level will end eventually. Revelations. This level is generally fine. I think it's long enough to work for me, the boss fight is fun with a few unique elements, and it covers all the beats of the scene good enough. This can remain as is for the most part, just stop forcing me to play as Luke in free play mode. It's free play mode. If I want General Grievous to grovel at Vader in the hallway, why can't I do that when other LEGO games are allowing me to add characters in these scenes? If other LEGO games can do it, so can this one. Return of the Jedi. A plan to save Han and the Copa Katana should just be made into a single level. You don't need to have any changes, you can just feel like it's part of a full mission. Combining them would fix the issue, because they both just they both feel like halves of a mission. Combine them together, and you give us a free level to add in. You just need to add a section or a cutscene of them getting to the start of Kobe Katana. Endor the Line is a shit level that isn't fun, and if you wanted to fix it, I'd say just take the concept of a speed up bike level and then find it to actually be good. I don't have many ideas. The Chewbacca Defense is a frustrating one, because it has so much potential and some great ideas. The split takes you through two completely different paths, and that's great. Apprehending the ATST is also great. However, the level plays out as 75% an introduction to the scavenger class of characters, and I'd say that bit should be revised to just be the starting section, with a few simple puzzles making full use of the net launcher, breaker blaster, and the glider. Then comes the rest of the level, where you use those abilities along with Chewie's scoundrel aiming thing to set up and execute traps. Some of these traps will be based on the film, and some are just silly Lego nonsense. After making that a full and fun indoor trap based level, you end with the power trip ATST section which can go on a bit longer and include maybe a light boss battle where you have to destroy the door to the shield generator, or whatever it's called, I, th I think it's the shield generator. Fulfill Your Destiny is a good enough level. Keep it as it is, but with two major changes. One, make Palpatine more interesting to fight. Mostly just give him his lightsaber, he didn't have it in the original film, but the Palpatine character in this game has a lightsaber. Make it part of the boss battle, as opposed to just your redirect lightning. Don't make it a full lightsaber fight though, because then it would just be a lightsaber fight. Have a, have a bit of variety. And two, change the two player thing. If you didn't know, if you have two players, the second player plays as Vader. But the goal is still just to kill Vader. So it's not actually a duel between them, because the Vader player can't win. Instead, make it a proper duel between players. Then there's a free level slot, and I see two options. The biggest one is obviously the Battle of Endor. You can make this into its own level, both playing as the Falcon and the A-Wing to fight off the TIE Fighters while protecting Home 1, taking out the Executor, and finally going into the Death Star 2 to have a boss battle with its core. But you could also make that the second half of Fulfill Your Destiny to make a longer single level. If you did that, you can instead have a level with Han, Leia, Chewie, and Wicket within the Imperial Shield Generator, exploring it in a stealth focus mission where you take out Imperials and try to shut down the Generator, only for it to end in vain. Honestly, I'd say make either that the part 2 of Chewbacca Defense, or make the other one, the Battle of Endor, part 2 of Choose Your Destiny. I'd personally say make the Shield Generator bit just part of Chewbacca Defense, and make a full-length, super large-scale Battle of Endor level. Sequels, oh boy, nearly done. The Force Awakens. First Order of Business is a fine level. Not much I'd say would need a change beyond adding an ending section where you're Finn and Poe trying to get away from the First Order in space before you crash. Low Flying Garbage is another example of a level where the stuff that comes before it in gameplay should actually be part of the level as opposed to free roam. 
that being Rey and Finn fighting off first order stormtroopers, running through the quad jumper, and then running to use the Falcon. That is all its own level, with some puzzles involving opening up the gates to get to the quad jumper, and then it leads into the big Jakku air battle against the TIE fighters, which you can make a bit more interesting than it is, I don't know. Then we get to the ending chase through the Star Destroyer, which would probably be a bit longer too. Aside from that, pretty good. Rewatch your solo is actually a good enough level for my liking. I, I think it's pretty decent. You switch between Finn and Rey's group and Han and Chewie's group to help each other get to the Falcon and leave. It's a good level. <sighs> Star Killer Queen is fucking lame. You just run around killing Stormtroopers, then do the lame Phasma battle. Straight up, just have the level include Rey's platforming parkour journey through Star Killer Base as part of it as well. And you can just make the stuff leading up to this area part of it. Like everything from the Falcon landing and Han Chewie and Finn going through the icy outskirts trying to get into the base. And you can have other stuff too, like them planting the explosives to blow it up, and Kylo killing Han. That should be part of the level, because I don't think this cutscene can actually be viewed after you do the level the first time. I think when you do free play, you can't actually watch this cutscene, which is hilarious, because it's when Han dies. With all this, the lame level itself can just be reduced to the Phasma battle, and the rest of it can just make up the proper level with the Phasma battle just being like the end or the middle. Destroying Starkiller is mostly fine, I think it does the level well enough with you fighting Starkiller's defenses, then the long Kylo fight. All I think should be done is Finn with the lightsaber should be added to your roster as a playable character, because I think he'd be a really unique hero character, and sort of a counterpart to the villain size General Grievous, as they're both lightsaber users, who aren't Jedi or Sith, and have a blaster. Grievous also has bombs like the villain class, and Finn would have a grapple hook like the hero class does and they may, that makes up for their lack of force abilities. Now I do feel like there's one sort of other major thing you could do here. Make Starkiller Queen and Destroying Starkiller one level, where you just have the bomb planting sequence, the thousand battle but shorter and simpler, and the Starkiller fight and the Kylo battle to finish in one super tight extra long level that works as the climax of the episode, with a save point in the middle like earlier LEGO games with levels being long enough to warrant it. Because the actual levels in this game can finish in like three minutes. Then this free space can be used for the battle on Takadana, both Finn's side, where he tries to run and also fights the traitor guy, and Raid's side, where she's trying to run but gets captured by Kylo. Maybe have a short scripted boss fight with that last bit, where you're trying to fight Kylo as Rey, but he totally bodies you, destroys your stick, and takes you captive. This ends with Poe's fleet coming in to fight off the First Order. Alternatively, for a less action-oriented level, uh, a puzzle platforming level where you're Rey and BB-8 scavenging parts for portions instead of the lame sequence you actually get in the game. The Last Jedi. Last Jedi actually has a decent lineup of levels in terms of the scenes chosen, but they have a few issues. Dameron's Defiance is a battle from the start of the film, which honestly, it's fine, it's about as impotent as the actual battle, but it also has some interesting sequences. So I say this is more than serviceable as a level 1 for the film. Master Code Breakout is another great idea, with the Kanto Bite section being turned into a level, but it's just the prison bake itself, and it's over before you know it. <sighs> I, I do, why do I have to say this? Make the horse chase part of the level. Like, come on, where the fuck is this? It's perfect for the game. If I had a nickel for every time Star Wars had an animal chase in their films, which wasn't adapted into Lego Star Wars or Skywalker Saga as a level, I'd wonder where the fuck the third nickel is and why they only did the stupid ass ride of Skywalker one. No Snoke Without Fire is half fine, that half being the battle with the Praetorian Guards, and half terrible, that being the long hallway walk before that. Just make this into a puzzle platforming section where Rey and Kylo have to work together instead of just walking down a hallway and then moving one thing. I like hearing this Lego version of Kylo trying to be really hardcore and cool, but secretly being a massive dork, and Rey being this strangely hyper hateful towards in person. I love more of that banter to spice up the level when they're just working together as friends, but Rey is oddly aggressive to him and Kylo is trying to be aggressive back but still kind of geeking out over the fact that they're working together and, you know, force friends which leads into the Praetorian Guard battle. Chrome Dome Down is also a fine level. It's a unique no lightsaber boss battle against Phasma leading to an BB-8 ATST power trip. Good enough for me. Ground Assault is also a fine idea. I love the Luke section where you don't have any attacks and all buttons are just used to dodge because Luke isn't physically there. It works gameplay and story together really well. But the escape is a bit bland. But there's two paths to go down the level and I like that. Maybe have a bit more at the end with Rey helping everyone escape with the Force to make it a bit longer though. If I was to add another level, it would probably be Finn, Rose, and DJ infiltrating the Supremacy only for DJ to betray them. But you can just add that as a part of Chrome Dome Down. So it would be that, and then it leads into the boss battle. I suppose a different interesting idea would be to make a Mirror Cave level, where it's a Ray and BB-8 puzzle level, using the Mirror gimmick that's already in the game for an interesting and well-designed puzzle level with the multiple simultaneously moving rays. So but BB-8 is not connected to the Force, he's a droid, he doesn't have the reflection that moves and actually has physical mass, 
so instead he uniquely interacts with Aria's Raycon without moving her reflections, giving you a really cool if done right puzzle level as opposed to just a sword section we get of them standing on buttons. Rise of Skywalker, the final film. This film has some of the lamest levels in the whole game, especially the first two. A skip and a jump is just you fly in a straight line and press a few buttons to hyperspace jump. I think instead of just trying to copy the film sequence, this should have just been massively expanded on so you actually have fully made on rail shooter segments where you spend a good amount of time in the other areas they hyperspace jump into, instead of going to Coruscant for three seconds and then leaving. Or, instead of having these funny random areas you go to in the cutscene just being in the cutscene, actually make them pass of the level so you hyperspace jump to a ton of wacky areas not in the film. They Fly Now is an embarrassing waste of a level, you just shoot a few guys in the last three seconds. Seriously, why they try to do an on rails thing and it just fucks up when they do it. Anyway, trying to think best case scenario here. You know that cave? How about instead of that being a lame and inept part of the galaxy free roam, it was just a massive level. You get to fully explore the cave in separate teams which go down their own paths until they meet up again. Once they meet up, you combine all of their unique abilities to get Ray to the snake thing and heal it, which then leads into the actual level we got as the second half, and then you get to the third half. In the third half of level, you play as Ray and... I don't know, Finn? In a boss battle against Kylo Ren's TIE Silencer, that is not just a cutscene. You fight the TIE Silencer, avoiding its attacks, getting undercover, building up platforms to get higher up so Ray can jump and attack it, ending with the final bit being a full struggle between Kylo and Ray pulling at the transport where you have to button mash. But, once you button mash too fast, you cause Ray to fire off Force Lightning that ends the level. C-3P Oh No is the only level in this film I think is just fine. It's a long enough stealth level that doesn't overstay its welcome or end too quickly. It's fun to try to stealth through, fight through, and stealth fight through. Leave it as it is. The strength to do it is a level. You fight Kylo across the course of it until he dies. Honestly, just have the Death Star 2 wreckage and the stormy boat trip to the wreckage be the earlier parts of the level, which then ends with the big Kylo section. Be with me is the final level and it's boring and stupid. You have a fine battle against the Knights of Ren and the Sovereign Protectors, and then the sort of okay bit in the Zeissen class destroyer, with Finn and the woman I forgot the name of, and then a landmass final battle. It's fine, but... <sighs> make the Zeissen battle more exciting. If I was to add a level, the Battle of Exegol, it's already a stupid video game moment if I ever saw one. Or, as an alternate, make the Battle of Exegol part of the final level, and instead do a level that's all the fellas on Kylo and Star Destroyer on the rescue mission to save Chewie. I'd say that should be its own level where you have to fly onto the Star Destroyer without making a ruckus, then travel through it to save Chewie, ending with Hux's betrayal, and then the Battle of Exegol can become part of Be With Me. You get the boss fight with the Sovereign Protectors of the Knights of Ren, then the Battle of Exegol, which ends when you land on the Zeistan and do the horse run, and then you get the final bid. But, instead of what we actually got, you have all the Jedi voices speaking, which isn't in the game, and maybe instead of sticking to the movie's lame-ass Rey walks in a straight line with two glow sticks final fight, have the other Jedi's ghosts physically show up to help stop Palpatine's lightning. Mace Windu, Kid Fisto, Anakin, Luke Skywalker, Kiadi Mundi, Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, they have all the Jedi models in the game, have them show up to help Rey here. And there we go, I tried to fix all the levels in LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. How did I do? Do you like my ideas? Do you think I'm a stupid dumbass Australian needs to get alive and stop playing Lego games? And do you agree that the Solo and Rogue One DLC should have come with at least shorter three mission to bridge adaptations of the film thereof as well? Comment below what you think and I'll go do something else like finishing Galaxy Free Roam and all its tedium to get 100%. Also, where is Coleman Trabor? Seriously, are they just afraid of the unstoppable combination of Coleman Trabor and Emperor Gonkantine?